I'm now going to demonstrate the use of the ferret. And this is a flute that's come back for its annual checkup. And I'm going to start with the B foot joint and we'll start with the C sharp key. So here's the ferret and I'm going to put it down the tube until it's opposite that pad. The white band on the ferret on the probe must be just visible. It doesn't matter where it is exactly. As long as it's visible in the hole, that's good enough. Turn the black knob up until that's fairly tight, not too tight, don't need to overdo it, and that's locked in place. What that's done, it's created a, a little chamber underneath that pad, which when the pad is shut, that chamber should be airtight, and we'll see if it is. So we get the other end, and the procedure is this. I'm going to suck until the levels of water change, and then close the key, and then stop sucking. Perfect. I'm just fingering that key really lightly. And it's closing instantly and pretty much 100%. That's very good indeed. Now you might be wondering what happens, or what would happen if it were leaking? What would the, what would the um, indicator show? So here I've got a human hair plucked specially for this demonstration. And I'm going to try and manipulate it so that it's underneath that pad when the pad is shut. So I've got to do the same thing again. There. Do you see the difference? Look at that. That's a really serious leak. It's one hair crossing the uh, point where the pad touches the tone hole just once and that constitutes a serious leak. If the water goes down at that rate it means you're in trouble. It means the flute simply won't give the power and resonance that you expect it. Now in the foot joints that doesn't necessarily mean it, it's, it's not playable. It won't be too bad because uh, at the bottom leaks are not so important. But if that same leak occurred up at the top end of the flute it'd be a very serious matter and you'd have to put it right. Let me show you the source of another type of leak, which is an un, un, um, uh, a, a badly adjusted clutch. Now, there's a clutch between the C and the C sharp on all flutes. And I can see by looking at this one that there is a little bit of residual movement there in the C sharp key. In other words, when I finger the C key, the C sharp isn't closing absolutely completely with it. There's a little gap. Let's see what that represents in terms of pressure. Now, this time, I'm going to do the same thing again, without the hair, obviously, uh, but I'm going to pr press the C key instead of the C sharp. Well, there. And <clears throat> no pressure at all. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect it to. That, that, that's, that shows a really serious leak, but only because the clutches are not in adjustment. So let's, with the screwdriver, this flute, by the way, does have an adjustment on this clutch here so I'm going to turn it a little bit see what effect that has better better not quite there but much better turn a little bit more yeah got it and now I can see by looking at them that those two keys are going down together so that shows how sensitive this is Let's move on and do the other pads and see how they compare. So we'll do the C key itself now. Yeah, very good. The B. Yeah, that's okay too. And finally the E flat. Now, with these keys which are um, normally closed, that's to say the E flat and the G sharp and the trill keys, then you have to uh, do a slightly different procedure. I mean, obviously, you have to open the key, 
to, to align the probe, get it in the right place, and then suck, and then just let the key close by itself. There. That's good. That's fine. So that's all right. So actually that B foot is perfectly okay. Let's have a look at the other one now, the C foot, and see how it compares. This time I'll start with the E flat. So suck, let the key close, and then look. Ooh, there's a slight leak under that one. Hooray, we found a leak. <laughs> Just try it again. Yeah, it's a slow leak. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press on that key to see if I can stop it. Pretty well, yes. That proves that it's the pad that's leaking. If there were a pinhole or a tear in that pad, then I wouldn't be able to stop the leak by simply squeezing it. It just wouldn't. It would go on leaking. But if the pad is not quite level, then certainly a little extra finger pressure will close it. Of course, players don't want to have to do that. They mustn't. And you should never tell a player to press harder on the keys if it's leaking. Let's just try it again. I mean, it's not much. Actually, now I've opened and shut it a few times, it seems to have sort of rectified itself. They do that sometimes. I mean, this thing is so sensitive. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd probably let that go. I think I would. I think the first time it may have just had a little crumb of dirt in there. <laughs> Of course, um, condensation from warm breath will improve matters. If there are very tiny leaks, the condensation will fill them up, which may be one of the reasons flutes play better after they've been warmed up. The pads simply seal better. Yeah, uh, it's fine now. It's fine because I breathed on it. Isn't that interesting? Let's go down and have a look at the others. <clears throat> yeah, the clutch, the clutch is out just like the last one was. I'm testing this one, but I'm playing it as it were with this one, and I can see there is a gap. So I'm just going to do up the screw a little bit. That's got it. And then finally, the C key. Yep, yeah, that's okay. So there you are, in a nutshell. I'm gonna stop this video and then do another one with the rest of the flute. We'll have a look at the main body of the flute now. Uh, what I like to do is to um, push the probe up from the lower end because that means that the flute is then in the right position for me to put my fingers on it as though I were playing it. If you push it in from the other end, you can do all the tests just the same way, but then the flute's the wrong way round and you, you can't be quite sure whether you're, you're squeezing the keys a little bit too much if you do it that way. So I'm going to go in from the bottom and the length of the probe has been designed to reach the thumb hole but no further and so the remaining keys the little trill keys will have to be reached from the other end but that's fine now I'm going to be showing you another technique you need to know we'll start with the F sharp there see how that goes now <clears throat> this one here is closed by either of these three right-hand keys. So we've got to 
test it with all three. That will test the clutches as well as the pad itself. I mean, we can start with just figuring that one if we want to, see how good it is. Yeah. All right, that's 100%. That's 100% that one. So we'll see now whether it, it's still 100% when we close it with the other keys. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So that that one is correct. And as far as we can see, the clutches are right, but we need to check these ones independently as well. So that's the next job is to go down to the F key. Now, this is an open hole flute. So we must be aware that there are two. There's an extra source of leak, if you like, and that is between the finger and the key itself. Fingers can be very rough. They can have abrasions and cuts on them. And it's surprising how uh, badly a, a, a rough finger will leak. Even if the pad is fine, you'll still get a leak there. So that's part of the reason why people have trouble. Some people have trouble with open hole flutes as they simply can't cover the holes properly. And I will show you exactly what happens. So to test the um, pads independently, we have to cover over the hole with something sticky. I use this insulating tape, I think it's the best. So cut a little square of that and stick it over the hole like that and make sure it really is stuck down. Any little lumps and bumps in it underneath where, the, where you can see the hole in the key, any little lumps and bumps there, well they must not be there. Use a piece of clean tape or reposition it until it's properly stuck down. It's very important. Now, I've, I'll move the ferret down a little bit. That's it, that's that one there. And I'm gonna test the F. Now, did you notice <clears throat> that little bounce? When the water levels changed and I closed the key, the, there was a little bounce. Let, let me show you again. See, it? that's a good sign. It means that that pad is closing instantaneously, which is what you want. Moving on down to the next one is the E. And we'll do the same thing again. Very good. Looks to me like these clutches are all bang on. Hmm. There is the slightest suggestion of a leak on that D key, but it is tiny. That's very small. It's so small, I think I would ignore it, especially as it's down towards the bottom end of the flute. It's not really going to affect anything much. And it's probably because the pad is a bit grubby. Um, these have been in there now for, ooh, I don't know how long, maybe about seven or eight years. Um, the impression circle is, is black, as they always are, and it may be harboring a couple of little tiny particles of dirt or grit which would be enough to cause a small leak definitely so I probably will attend to that one well I will certainly attend to it let's go back up the tube now to um, one of the others we'll have a look at the well we start with the thumb key and have a look at that and work our way down That's fine, nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> Notice it's, it's a quick procedure. It really doesn't take longer than a couple of minutes to test a whole flute. Right, <clears throat> the B flat key here, I'm not sure about, there is a slight leak.
There are, of course, um, four different ways of closing that key. You can close it um, either with the A key or with the side lever or the long B flat, which is this one, or, of course, the thumb B flat. So there's, um, there are three clutches involved, three different clutches, so they've all got to be perfect. But you can always finger it itself, it, it, finger the key itself um, when you want to test it individually. And if I do that, there is the trace of a leak. It's very much like this other one. Tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So I will have a look at that and decide what to do. It is very small, however. Going down, this is the A key. Open hole, so put a little bit of tape on it. Oh, that's leaking. Right, that's got a serious leak under it, and I don't know what's causing it, so again, that will have to be looked at. Can't see anything. I'll be using my feeler gauge. Um, the feeler is, of course, one of these. A little bit of very thin material. It's a bit of thin poly bag, actually, that I've used for that. Let's just complete the job by doing the G and the G sharp. Nothing wrong with the G, that's okay. Finally, the G-sharp. This, of course, tests both pads at once because they're opposite each other. Yeah. That's okay. So we've got only one bad one and one slightly suspect one, which was the D and um, this is this is the bad one so i should have to do something about that um but there you are that is how you use the ferret and it is incredibly sensitive and incredibly use useful and quite honestly i couldn't do any accurate flute padding without it hope you've enjoyed this video and i hope that you might get one of these and find it really really useful